Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and CJ here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we'll be reviewing New Japan Pro Wrestling's G1 Climax 34, Day 9, and I know that 8 is up there. <laughs> yeah, let me go ahead and correct it. Let me go ahead and get that corrected, so. Alright. So, we're going to start off, and after this, we're going to review a uh, viewer comment. But, um, this, um, this starts off a block. It's all A block, all A block. It's Callum Newman versus Jake Lee. Um, look, I'm going to tell you all right now, I do not like Callum Newman. I just don't. And some of you, you know, some people, I've, heard, I've, I've listened to this on multiple podcasts and other uh, shows and stuff. Where people are just saying, look, look, it's the new style, it's the new this. Just, you know, accept it. You know, and, and there was a comment about that up here. And here's the thing about that comment. That's that's a toxic comment. It's like, okay, it's the new thing. It's not going away, so let's accept it. You have to be worldly with your comments. When you say something like that, imagine... If they just start doing stuff that would turn you off and it doesn't go away and someone says look it's the way it is now just accept it you would probably say hell no that's not right but you got to be worldly that's why we're picky and we're not overly picky we're not like high maintenance picky but there's just some things that shouldn't happen for example on a rope break, in the beginning of this, Callum backs off. It's a clean break. But then he fully turns his back on Lee and walks away slowly. One, in a fight, that's more than arrogant and disrespectful. Two, in general, that's just plain disrespectful. You are my opponent. If I have so little respect for you, your talent, your ability, then I'm going to turn my back and give you that level of freedom to strike me? Something's wrong with you and or me. Later in the in the matches, Okan had his back to, to evil. You always do this. But yeah. Go ahead. Keep I'm going. I'm giving you a suggestion. I'm yeah, go ahead. And evil messed him up. And, and he had the upper hand. For half the match. There are things that make sense when you do it. This? No, no, no. I wrote Jake should have blasted him in the back of the head with everything he had. I don't give a damn if he concussed him. I really don't. And it's not that I don't have any regard for wrestlers' safety or other people's safety. You're not going to disrespect me like that. That ain't happening. I'm, if I'm, I'm a professional athlete and you're going to disrespect me like that, oh no, you catching it. You're going to learn one way or the other. You're going to respect me. And that was just disrespectful. But Jake ultimately got the win with the boot kick in the corner and he pinned him. But Jake's performance was good. Yeah. He did real good. Callum, I, if it weren't for Jake Lee, I would have skipped this match. I did not care to watch it. His very first match, Jake didn't show much, but since then he's shown a lot, a lot of ability, a lot of ring generalship, and a lot of personality. Yep. And he's a heel that I can get behind. Yep. He's not a sniveling, cowardly little heel or nothing like that. Cedra likes that. I can't stand that sniveling. <laughs> oh, I'm going to hit you with this. When the you, ref's gone, you know what, when you come after me, I'm going to run like a little Weasley I'm going to expose, I'm expose Cedra for this right here. Expose Because she doesn't, she doesn't know where she got this from. Hating the sniveling heel, she has no memory of where this originates. It originates from that movie, Gladiator. That's when it started. Oh, I'm going I'm to tell you, it originates before that. I, Seriously? Because I, 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 I don't recall you ever. I didn't ever. have a name for it. I didn't have a name for okay. it. But it originated before this out of literature, out of me reading. I can break it down for you real good. The Scarlet Letter. 
scarlet letter is about a woman whose man is off at war and she has a baby well if your husband's at war and you have a baby that means you've been getting down with somebody else so that meant she was a whore so she and her baby were ostracized she had to wear a red letter on her outfit but she never told who the father was so she got put through hell having to survive on her own without the help of the town and the father's able to skate free i am free and unencumbered nobody knows it was me so it turned out that the father was the local preacher but he he the father was the father the father was the father and every time you see him he's sickly <laughs> He's withering away because his guilt is eating away at him. Yo, guilt. This woman is face to face with what she did every day, getting spat upon and put upon by the townspeople. Nobody know what you did, and you're just sickly and wasting away and, and begging God for forgiveness. Fuck you. That's where my hate for a sniveling heel came from. And then juxtapose that beside an intelligent heel like Iago from Othello. Iago was like, oh, Othello, we're best friends. Oh, Othello, you're great. Oh, Othello, you know, your wife, you know, she was talking to this other dude. And I don't know if that's real good for you. The whole time he was hating Othello's guts. He was so clever and conniving and manipulative. It was fantastic. And then like Papa Pope from Scandal, mm -hmm. he was a good heel too. Yes, he was. He was a strong heel. He was not sniveling. So that's where it comes from. So when I started seeing that stuff during the Attitude Era with Triple H, you know, I'm all big and bad with my ex, but then as soon as you got a weapon, oh no, ready for the heels. Okay. Couldn't stand it. Okay. Couldn't stand it. <laughs> okay, I'm done. So, <laughs> back to the regular schedule programming. Okay, so that's the origin of heel hate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so next we got Evil versus Great Okan. And yeah, Okan turned his back. Evil blasted him. Controlled a good portion of the match. A good portion of the match. He was raking Okan over the coals and walking him dry. But it wasn't that kind of fight. Like, okay, you disrespected me. I'm going to jack you up. Oh, no. Evil was just being evil. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, was, it, 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 you could, it was a work. But I would have done the cow and wouldn't have been a work. You ain't going to do that to me. No. Mm-mm. Like for when, like when they do that bump on the shoulder or a slap, and then they turn their back, mm -hmm. pause, and then run to the ropes. Oh no! I snatch you bald, and if you bald, I snatch your skull. <laughs> snatch your scalp. <laughs> yep. So, Okan, he was being counted out. He rolled inside the ring on fourteen, but Evil was distracting the ref and did pull Okan out. And the ref turned around and kept counting. Kept counting. <laughs> but Okan got in at 18. But it was funny. I was like, that was a different kind of cheat. Yeah. I haven't seen that before. That's one, <laughs> that's one thing. Look, if y'all don't like the cheaters and whatnot, you, you, just watch the matches. At least they're doing new takes on cheating. Yeah. If they, it's original, fresh material. Yes. That can be appreciated. Yes, you don't. You get tired of seeing the same thing over, over and over, over again. Yes. Like Dick coming in with his dang garrote. But it's when he does it. It's, it, 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 it's when now. Because before it was, you could always put a stopwatch to it. Yeah. You know, but now you don't know. You know he's going to do it or try to, but you don't know when. So that's, uh, that's something. They're working on it. Yeah. And so, all right. So Okan, he had Evil in the, a really good body scissors Kimura. Now he didn't have the Kimura on, or not, not too well, or the Hammerlock. But it, you know, he could have really done something. He was tearing at the tape, undoing it, trying to take away his elbow support. Mm -hmm. um, then he transitioned to a cross arm breaker or Juji Gatame, and then the cheating begins. So Okan, he survived being garroted, a chair shot, thrown into the exposed buckle a couple of times, and he hit the dominator and, and got the pin. He also survived the biting. Yeah, Okan, he got bit Okan on the shit. Okan had shin. evil in, in a submission hole and evil started biting. It's like, oh, there he goes, what you do? That's the right thing That's to do. <laughs> he didn't bite hard enough. He bit hard of Okan would let go completely. The arms would went out of the air. Ah! Yep. And Okan wasn't eating the moves. He didn't eat these big moves. No. He survived them. It's a big difference. And I wrote, this is good. This is a good win for the king of pro wrestling champion. Yeah. 
So, okay. So now we get A block. A, we got Gabe Kidd versus Tetsuya Naito. And Naito is going to be a consistent baby face. He can't be a heel anymore. He just can't. There's so many worse heels. Not that, but I'm going to say this. He earned turning heel and forming Los Ingobernables de Japón. He yeah. earned that. Um, and then all the stuff going on, where he was trying to get the IWGP belt. Mm -hmm. He was there at the time, Intercontinental title, uh, Champion, yeah. for a while. He just, I don't know if they worked it in the back or if he was actually that legit pissed, but he broke that belt up best he could. He did. And everyone could easily see how every opponent had to drag Okada through every match. Yep. They had to drag his worthless, feckless self through their matches. Yes, he's a more or less safe wrestler. He's polished in what he does, but he's got no oomph. He's got no drive. He's got nothing. He'll do, so, he'll do one of his moves and then yell like that means something. Mm -hmm. And so the crowd really wanted Naito to beat Okada because Tanahashi was like, look, you ain't going to do it. You're done. <laughs> and Naito, they wanted him to win. They wanted him to get that belt from Okada. And now we find out that Naito has degenerative eye dis uh, disease. Or disorder is well, one of them, but degenerative to his eyes. And he had surgery a couple of years ago, as you explained to me that you remember them saying in the G one that he had uh, yeah eye surgery just to prolong his career. And so I'm like, man, he's gonna go blind, you know. And hopefully in the coming years they find a way to stop this. But when you know all of this stuff is going on, how can you? Hate the guy, you know. Now if he came out straight up, if he just if Naito found out, look, this dude is like, if you ain't Japanese, you are just evil, you are worthless and meaningless. I'd be like, oh crap, dude. Oh, I hope you go blind tomorrow. <laughs> I hope you go blind tomorrow. I hope I hope you I hope you do it while you run into the ropes. You just fall out. That's what I, that's what that would be. Um, but Naito has been a face in his heeldom for years. He's the cool heel. <laughs> but the opening moment of his match, what did Naito do? He turned his back on Kid like he was nothing. And Gabe blasted him in the back of the head and he beat his ass in that corner like he should. Mm -hmm. Gabe Kid whooped his ass. All right. That is what I'm talking about. He whooped his ass. That's how you do it. I like Gabe Kid without the stupid. I like this kind of Gabe Kid. Cedra can't stand him. I don't know if she's judging the book by the cover wrong, but she can't stand him. But this had heavy hits near the end. And Naito scored the win with the flying head scissors transitioned into a small package. It was beautiful. That was some Lucha Libre stuff right it there. Was. And Naito is so pleased with himself yeah. as he, he lays on the ring table boasting and smiling. Trying to get Gabe to look at him. Yep, he keep boasting. Naito is super pesky mm -hmm. with this stuff. And then Gabe rolls over and sees it. He loses his mind. He starts beating up people trying to get to Naito and Naito evades him. And then Gabe walks off, you know, because he can't get to him. Naito climbs into the ring. And, he, and then the rev hands Naito the, the, the world belt and, and his hat. hat. And he's rewarded with what? An eye rake. Yep. <laughs> Naito is very happy with himself. Very happy with himself. And I like the fact that the match did not go through the typical formula. Yes. It, 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 it looked more legit. Like Naito had to outthink this rabid animal he was wrestling. I like that. I like it too. Okay. So now we got Shoto Umino versus... Sonata and I didn't like this match. Didn't like it. I thought both of them performed poorly. I wasn't happy. Um, but at this juncture, the sound was off. Yeah, and it just stayed off. There was a part with Shota. Uh, he was getting ready to do something, and it just paused. I was like, "This isn't going to get any better." And it didn't. 
but no, not the best match of the night so far. But you know, but Sonata he won with the Japanese leg roll clutch. Mm -hmm. it, you know, um, I wasn't happy with all the big moves uh, with no sales. You know, they ate DDTs and other finishers. I'm just not a fan of that. And people, I, I wish y'all could understand why it's important to not no sell big moves and finishes. It's highly important. And in short, big moves, when you know that wrestler, you know how they get down, those big moves add a sense of danger to you. You wonder, oh man, he did this. I don't know if they're going to get up off of this one. Because you've known that wrestler to win with those moves. Mm -hmm. But when they no selling DDTs and brain busters and, and certain backdrops, it's like, come on, man. So what does it take? A gunshot to put you down? <laughs> I got to I gotta shoot you in the navel at a 45 degree angle up? I might sell your spine, but you still might kick out. <laughs> so it, it kills the danger. You want to see that brain bust. You're like, oh, that's it right there. That's it. And then they kick out. And it's like, oh, oh, my goodness. Save it for those big events. That's what you do. Save it for those title matches or those number one contender matches where it's like, if you don't win this, who knows where your career going to go. Yeah. Save it for that stuff. Man. So we get to the main event. And this is Zack Sabre Jr. versus Shingo Takagi. This was a good match. This was good. Mm -hmm. Can't hear it. It would have been good to hear it, but we had to turn it down because it was so off that we would have heard the bell ring and who the winner was 30 seconds before the match ended yeah. physically. So, uh, anyway, Zack worked the arm as well as only he can do. Mm -hmm. Takagi, he could not do anything without it ailing. Man, he couldn't efficiently pump and bomber or nothing. No, he messed no, up his no, bomb no, pumper. No corner bombers and the sliding bomber. That's what started. He tried to do a sliding bomber. He caught that arm and it was it was all short after that. Yep. Sliding bomber. Arm bar. How about like that, man? Yeah, basically. And then he put, wrapped his ankles around it and twisted. Yep. <laughs> a junior had, uh, he had him tied up and when Takagi popped free, it was like he slipped out. But he was all tied up. Mm -hmm. Almost like a, uh, I don't know, like a weird banana split arm breaker kind of thing. Yeah. And he popped out. And he, he, he he hopped to the ropes like desperation. Yeah. He hopped to the ropes and, and, and just held on. For Shingo does not like the most flexible in the individual. I don't think that Shingo's had his legs spread that wide in a very long time. <laughs> what are you insinuating? I'm insinuating that he keeps his legs closed. <laughs> you said that, man. It's almost like you say, that, like a girl should. What's the matter with you? What's he going to spread them for? Just, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> you didn't heard something? What? what do you know? I know nothing. That's exactly where I keep it. I know nothing. Mm-hmm. So... Shingo, he kicks out of the Zack driver, which looked more like a heavy slam, so it makes sense on the aesthetics. Yeah. Uh, Takagi, he was in the triangle choke, and he wasn't fighting back. I'm saying he's in this choke, and I'm like, bruh, you need to fight back intelligently. You need to show you got some gumption. Show something, because the, the ref can't afford to look stupid. Yeah. He can't afford the match to look stupid. So if you're not fighting back and it's obvious, the ref's going to have to call it. Yeah. Whether it's legit or not, he's going to have to do something. And so when Red Shoes goes to call the match, Takagi grabs his leg and would not let him go. No, we tripped him, basically. <laughs> yep. Takagi power lifts Junior into the last of the dragon hold for the pin. Mm -hmm. When getting those two points. And I had to know that he dropped Junior on his neck and it looked scary. So far... As we can tell, Junior's okay. Yeah. Problem is, it's later that matters. Yeah. And it was both late in there, as you were saying. Assessing their injuries. Uh, Sabre was working out his arm, and you know, it was all, you can tell it was all tingly from his neck down his arm. And Shingo was working out both arms, and they both got messed up, and he's pointing to his elbow joints, and then he sits up and he's holding his neck. They all messed up. Yep. And, hey, Good main event. Yeah, it was. 
Good main event. So look, we after this we're gonna do the uh, we're gonna do the review, uh, answering viewers, and then that should do it for the day. But this has been Cedric Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary on New Japan Pro Wrestling G1 Climax 34 Day 9. And with that, we want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe, so that we can see you next time.